Hey everyone, how's it going? Dan here from Prompt Up. Hope you all had a great Thanksgiving for those of you in the US. Today we'll be talking about the differences between system messages and user messages, also known as prompts. Um, and so starting from the top, I'll say there isn't a lot of hard evidence in terms of giving really good detailed or empirical evidence in terms of where context should be put and whether the system message versus the user message the model providers don't even really touch on this too too much and kind of have also conflicting information so we'll do our best to kind of dive in and give a holistic view and give you all the information and tools to make the decision on your own um that being said we did do some tests on this you know more than a year ago at this point but just to give you a sense of you know hey we did test with with system messages without them with context in the system message versus all in the prompt and so you can go check that out if you want. I'll link it below. And so we'll talk about generally the different roles, some best practices that we found, um, why it's good to actually leverage both when you can, um, and some other examples. So at the top, or you know, when you're making an API request to any of the mostly any LLM um, provider or model, there's generally three roles: a system role, a user role, and then the assistant role. So the system role. Um, you know, is a kind of harkens back to chatbots where you can kind of define the, the system overall that the user is going to interact with. The user role is what re represents the user's input. Um, you know, that's going to basically be the prompt to get the output. And the assistant role is the LLM's response. And so what we've seen be most successful and kind of is in line with the guidance from the model provisors is to really use a system role at for high level information. So setting the context, giving overall behavioral guidelines, um, generally response style. Um, and you could also include some operational constraints um, as well, um, kind of just setting general boundaries of what you want the kind of interaction or with the user to be like. So again, all very high level though. And then the user role, um, that's where you kind of get more specific, I would say. Um, so you're getting more low level closer to the actual uh, problem you want the LLM to solve. So specific specific questions, specific contextual, uh, contextual information. If you're using a few shot examples, this is where those would go. Um, and then if you have a certain response structure that you want, there's bullet points um, or something else. This is also where that information would go because it's much more specific. And then, yeah, the assistant role is just what the LLM um, responds with. And so again, kind of narrowing it down, the system role should be used to set clear guidelines and context, and these roles where you get more specific. And so in cases where you are not using a chatbot, like let's say you're just generating some, some content, um, you could have a system role and a user message. You could just have a user message. You could um, you know, have different pieces of context in different places. And you know, why not stuff it all just into the user message? I think the roles are there probably for a reason. You might argue that the reason is really kind of harkens back to chatbots. And so if you're not using one, maybe you shouldn't want to use um, the system user role, but I think it makes it easier to structure it both for the LLM and also for you and your team. Um, kind of a clear differentiation between high level and low level information makes it easier, easier to iterate and move faster versus having one big, uh, big prompt. And again, stuff is new and changing so testing is becomes really important here and you know this also comes back to something that we say a lot is that if you try and jam this all into one prompt you know you're you're bound to have conflicting instructions or unclear instructions we always say hey, one each prompt should do one thing and do it well and that goes the same for system messages versus user messages that should be very clear and coherent and we talk about this a lot in our prompt training guide which we will also link below too and as I mentioned before, one large prompt can lead to ambiguity, not being clear, and again, much more difficult to iterate. And so we looked at a bunch of system message examples around this time last year for, from some of the major, you know, AI people in the space. So open AI, perplexity, so on and so forth, using prompt injections to get those out. Um, and even more recently, um, open AI launched a system instructions generator um, in their playground, and we used some prompt injections to presumably get what is the prompt behind that. So the system message that generates system messages. And so these are always really good examples to look at. Um, I think there's a lot of room for improvement with them. They're just quite long. Um, and as we just mentioned before, really long prompts are prone to, um, you know, I would say inefficiencies. And so check them out, but also understand that, hey, maybe this 
isn't the best way to do it, even if it's just, you know, Anthropic or OpenAI doing it. And then Claude is, you know, has their system prompts open. Um, you can see it in their documentation. We have the links to their templates in Prompt Hub so you can test them directly and make like little iterations and tweak them as well. And so wrapping up, system messages should be used to set context, other high level information, like setting a persona, if you're going to do that, um, tone, constraints, and so things that will persist throughout the conversation if you're using chatbot. And if you're not just, you know, setting the guidelines for whatever the generation that you're looking for. And then the user message or the prompt um, should really just be focused on the immediate interaction, much more low level, focus on the specifics. And so as with everything, you know, clarity is key. Um, separating the high level information from the low level information will be helpful. Um, and yeah, be careful of overly lengthy um, system messages as well. Um, so we've seen those kind of, again, just be inefficient and end up being more confusing and they are helpful. And that's it. Thanks guys.